Hi, and welcome to this video where we are going to go over how to install Specular from start to finish. So uh, first I want to mention that we have a wiki page uh, hosted on the uh, GitHub Trusted Sec repo under the Specular project. Uh, you can go into the wiki there and you can find more details about uh, commands you need to run and stuff like that. Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to install Specular. Oh, we have not yet released Specula, but we are recording this video. The Specula tool will be available at this URL once it's released. This is the uh, URL you will use when you do a Git clone uh, as part of the installation. Uh, I am going to do this from an internal repository we have at TrustedSec as part of the installation. Um, let me just go ahead and start that. I'm doing a git clone and I'm doing this into a demo folder. Next we need to install our virtual environment for us to contain the, the packages we need for a Python project. We do that by using python-m vnv vn to create a virtual environment. After that is created, we need to activate it. And that is something we do with the source command. We point it to the VN directory, bin activate. We can now see that VN has been activated and we can now go into our specular directory, which we clone down and we can install the required packages. So pip install dash r requirements. This will install all the packages that we need for, uh, for specular to get it running. Once that is done, we can now we can now start to run specular. We do that by typing sudo python uh, specular.py. Uh, and since this is the first time we are running this, it will ask for details about the setup. Here we need to specify the fully qualified DNS name. This can also be changed afterwards if you if you need to add DNS names later on or something, you can do that later in a config file. But for now, we are going to point this at uh, the IP address of my system. That should be our domain name. Uh, I'm gonna use HTTP in this lab environment, but normally you would use HTTPS and a fully qualified domain name. If you have pushover, you can specify the API token here. You can get notifications on your phone. I'm not going to do that. This is where it will ask for when it should terminate an agent. The default it's set to none, but you can send, set an end date. If you have an engagement that lasts from, uh, from, from today until like, I don't know, December 12th, you can set December 12th. And after that, the agent will terminate by itself. I'm just going to leave it at none. And this is Specialize designed to have two different URLs. One is something we call a validation URL. And this is a way to make sure that not everybody can just automatically onboard agents. We we kind of staged it. Like when an agent connects the first time, it goes to a validation URL. And for it to become a fully agent, we need to approve it in the console. And then it will grab a new URL. And that will be the, the URL that we use for C2 communication back and forth. So I'm going to leave this at the default plugin uh, sir. So we need to set this later on a host. So it will be http colon slash slash the IP address and then slash plugin slash slash search. And then it will ask for what will it use for as a base for the uh, C2 communication. I'm just going to leave it at CSS. It could be whatever you want. If you want something else, you can just type it here, uh, but I'm going to leave it at CS. So just press enter, it will choose the default. There's also a module inside Specla where you can host payloads for some scenarios. By default, it just generates a random slash 10 random character slash URL. Uh, but if you want to be really specific and have a specific URL, you can specify that here. I'm just going to leave it at default as of now. In terms of logging, some people refer uh, want needs other time formats, um, but uh, I'm going to leave it at default. You can specify however you want. And here's uh, the setting we need to specify for how many attempts of connections to the value validation URLs, validation URL before it 
gets approved. Default, it's set to five. That means that an agent connects five times to the slash plugin slash search. It will be automatically approved. However, I like to have it manual. I set it to zero. That way I can manually approve each agent. In terms of invalid agents, we can specify where we want to send them. So we can either use template uh, that will uh, just show something that looks like a plugin, or we can also just specify a URL. And whenever somebody tries to connect to that specific URL, either plugin search or slash CSS, it will get re redirected to those URLs. One of the um, things it's checking for is at least it should have Outlook in its user agent. That's how it determines if it's a valid agent or not. I'm just going to leave it at default. Refresh time. This is the same as all other C2 frameworks. How often will it beacon out to the server? I'm going to change this down since this is a lab. I'm going to set it down to 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, it will connect back to our server. You can also add some jitter. I'm going to set that to 10. Uh, then it asks about where we want to put what we want to name our logs. I'm going to just use the default specular underscore log. And there's also an operator log that you can take out afterwards if you want to see what commands you ran. <clears throat> and if somebody's poking at the server, you can also specify a server header. The default is IIS 8.5, but you can change it to whatever you want, Apache or some random name you kind of come up with. I'm just going to leave it at default. Uh, and then it's going to ask where it's going to store the encryption key on the, uh, an encryption key on the client. In Specula, there is a key that is stored on the server as well as on the client that they use to decrypt the, uh, the communication back and forth. So it's asking for like where it should store this key. Uh, by default, it's going to store it under the HKey current user software, Microsoft Office, and then the version of Outlook. Normally it's 16.0 slash Outlook slash user info. But you can specify whatever you want here. Uh, you can't use variables. You can't use, uh, like I showed in the example here with the version part. This is something I've hard coded, but if you want to have a specific place, you can, you can change that here. I'm just going to leave it at default. Uh, and then it's going to ask uh, what the name of the uh, the registry value should be. So if you were to browse with reg edit under the user info hive, uh, oh, sorry, under the uh, hive under right key CU user info, you would find a value called key. And this is where it's stored. If you specify key, you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to leave it at default key. And then you can specify port, which port the specular server should be listening on. And in my example, I'm going to choose 80. You can also create a block list if you want. I'm going to choose to not use a block list. What will happen if somebody connects from an, a block listed IP? It will just not, it will not serve anything at all. And that's it. And we're running the server.